I'm going to take you back a little bit and let you understand what was driving me towards that gold medal in that particular race. And um, I'd been a part of the national team for a long time, but I was kind of a late bloomer. So, yeah, by the way, I was the oldest male swimmer in the Olympics, okay? <laughs> I was 32 at the time. I'm a little older now. But there was a female in her 40s, okay? So I wasn't that old. Anyway, so I'll take you back and... In 1999 was my first major international competition representing the United States of America, and that 400 freestyle relay was always something that the U.S. had dominated. We had all this pride. We were the best in the world always, every single year. Well, we went up there, and we lost at a major international competition for the very first time ever. Okay, so obviously you feel disappointed. You got all this tradition, and you kind of feel like we blew it. But it was only a Pan Pacific Games. It wasn't the big deal. It wasn't the Olympic Games. We still had to come back the following year, and we could win it at the Olympics. 13 straight Olympic Games before 2000, we dominated. We won every single time. Okay? So I qualified for the uh, 4x100 freestyle relay in 2000. I was 24 years old. Obviously, my goal was to qualify for the 100 freestyle, which is my event. But I came in fourth place at our trials, so I didn't make my individual race but I did qualify for that relay. So just to be a part of the Olympic team, I felt like it was such an honor. And uh, because I didn't reach my top goal, I wasn't going to you know, be upset about that. I'm, a, I'm an Olympic, you know, can't take that away from me. I'm always going to be an Olympian. So we went to these games, and pretty funny story. Uh, you know how the French guy said, we're going to smash him. That's what we came here to do. Well, we had this guy on our team that, you know, he liked to talk a little bit of a trash. And that's kind of been his personality for a long time. He always did all these little antics and things. And... Um, we went up there, and uh, we're in Australia, you know, the dominant swimming country, and, you know, we're a dominant swimming country. They had beat us the previous year, but we had the four faster guys. We were the best team. So he made a comment, said, we're going to smash the Australians like guitars. I never talked to him about it. don't know where he came up with that or anything. It's kind of a weird comment, but so we're going to smash them like guitars, right? Well, we go in there, and uh, unfortunately, their leadoff guy goes in, he breaks the world record leading off the relay. We're already, you know, almost a body length behind. So every single one of us has to play catch up. The guy, uh, Neil Walker, jumps in. He tries to catch up. He actually passes the guy and then fades off at the end. I jump in. I pass my guy and then fade off at the end. And then the guy who talked all that trash, he jumps in. He passes Ian Thorpe. And then Ian Thorpe comes at the very last second, out touches him. And the Australian crowd of almost 20,000 people in Sydney, Australia, just went absolutely crazy. And then, of course, the three Australians standing behind the block start doing this. They're like, oh. So they rubbed it in a little bit. We got these screaming fans going absolutely nuts. And I'm just like, wow. We just blew this for the United States of America. We're, we're supposed to win. We didn't get a silver medal in my head. We lost. And it wasn't really something that I understood. You know, obviously, a silver medal is something that is an amazing, amazing feat. But at that time... Every single one of us felt like failures. We felt like we had let down our country and we didn't come through and uh, all that tradition was gone. So moving on to the following year, we go to the World Championships. Once again, we get second place. We go on to the Pan Pacific Games, we get second place. 2003, World Championships, second place. And then going into Athens. Now I'm in Athens and uh, I'm one of the top 100 freestylers in the world. And I qualify, and this time I make the individual races and the relay, so I got a lot of things on my plate. Will we go in there for that foreign freestyle relay? I really want to get that gold medal back, you know? It's waiting all these years. Forget about all these world championship defeats. As much as it hurts, this is the Olympic Games now. We got to get that race back. So we go in there, and uh, once again, we are the favorites. Every single time, we are the favorites. And our leadoff guy was a little sick that day and was two seconds behind. So our race was already over. We did the best we could. Everybody put in great swims, and uh, next thing you know, we didn't even get the silver this time. We got the bronze. But I learned from my previous experiences of all these uh, quote-unquote failures, and I said, you know what? That's a bronze medal. It's a great accomplishment. I'm going to get up there. I'm going to represent my country the best way I know how. I'm going to stand on that awards, accept that silver medal, and put a smile on my face. Because when I got home from 2000, you know, everyone was saying to me, wow, you guys looked horrible on the awards stand. You guys are all had frowns on. You can't represent your country that way. And I was, you know, it's not something that you're trying to do. But at the time, like I said, you're upset. So I, re I learned from that mistake. And obviously, I, I tried to get the other guys to, you know, be as happy to receive that bronze medal as I was. And um, some of them were, some weren't. But uh, we went up there. We accepted that. And I said, you know what? Wow, that's a tough way to end a career. You know, I'm 28 years old. You know, and a lot of people said, you're, you know, in swimming, 
it's not like other sports. People didn't continue swimming usually past college, maybe a couple years, and then that was it. But things were changing a little bit. I felt like I was still had some room for improvement. I was going to keep on going. And I had a few goals, and one of the things driving me towards the next games was that relay. It was like, I got to get that, you know. I got to show the world that we are the best nation, and there's something special about the United States when it comes to putting a team together. So going into the end of that Olympic Games, I had the medley relay. And I learned a lot from this relay. We had four guys on this team, and not one of us have had the Olympic Games that we had hoped for. Our backstroker, he was so talented that he actually won the gold medal in both of his races, even though he was a half a second off his best time, which was amazing. Our breaststroker had the world record in the 100 and the 200 breast, but he wound up getting a silver and a bronze medal, so he was disappointed in his two swims. Our butterfly, a world record holder in the butterfly, and he wound up getting the silver medal behind uh, Michael Phelps. But, and then me, I, I had a little, you know, I'll tell you about this story later, but I had a disappointing swim in my hunter freestyle as well. So all four of us had a little disappointment, and we went out there, and we broke the world record by three seconds, and just dominated and won that gold medal. And there was something that went on before that race. We had all four of these guys get together, and three of them actually went to the University of Texas, like in Mississippi maybe, I don't know if you guys hate Texas, I don't know. Um, <laughs> You guys are a lot closer than I am in California. But anyhow, so we got these three guys, and it was, you know, they all had that um, camaraderie together, and I, you know, kind of just mixed in there really well. And you, you could just see that these guys are pumping each other up, and I was getting in there, we were getting pumped up, and you could really feel it. These guys wanted that race for themselves, for their country, and for each other. And I never really realized that that's what you needed at the time, and I had seen our 400 freestyle relays where we kind of, which four guys, just marched up on the blocks. Yeah, we held hands and they announced USA. We put our hands in the air. But that really didn't mean that we were four guys wanting this for each other and for our team. It was kind of just four guys swimming their part of the race. And whatever happened, happened. And I saw that come together in that medley relay and I said, wow, that's a special feeling. I got to get that feeling to that 400 freestyle relay. But I didn't know how to do it. You know, I, I might have been 28 years old, one of the older guys on the team, but that doesn't make me a, a leader. That doesn't make me a captain just because you're old. Some people feel like you should, but um, I never had that personality, and it was something that, you know, I had to develop, and I said, you know what? I got to figure some way out to get these guys ready to make it, to get back where we need to be.